Well, clearly this heavy is not cutting it. I'm gonna need some upgrades. All right, so in all seriousness, we got a new build and this one's gonna be done more like a tutorial. It won't really matter which body you use or which motor you use. We're just gonna try to keep it pretty simple, uh, basic frame without any suspension. And uh, we're gonna try to do it all with hand tools. So we're not gonna use the lathe or the piranha or anything uh, that you wouldn't have at home. So it should be pretty fun. All right, so the first step is choosing your body. What we've noticed is the ones with the two seats, they generally have more room inside for humans, you know, rather than kids. And then what I noticed personally is the bigger hood, the better, right? It'll help you put the engine in there. The Jeep build seems pretty hard to me. That's not enough space. So to keep this build basic, we chose a dirt bike uh, air-cooled motor. So that's gonna make it cheaper, lighter, smaller. You won't have to do a radiator, or any coolant lines, anything like that. Um, and this one's electric start too, so you don't gotta worry about getting enough room for a kickstarter. And uh, yeah, so it's also gonna be probably the cheapest motor you can get. So our builds we like the best are the ones that we've been able to keep the most of the body. So we're just gonna slowly strip it down, try to get the motor put in here, and then we'll see what we really need to take out of the interior of the body, and then just bit by bit, remove what we have to to make it all work. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick break from this video to talk about the sponsor, Cove, and specifically the Commuter 2. Now we've been using Cove's products for over a year now, and we dig it, we edit to them, we build to them, it's awesome, and especially this little guy. Now when I'm editing the videos, I use it like this, really clean sound, really good bass, but when we're working in the garage, we split it. Instant surround sound, what more could you ask for? And these things get loud. We can listen to these things for up to seven hours without having to recharge them. You just connect your phone to Bluetooth, jam out. It's a great break from the headphones. And right now, Grind Hard fans can get early access to the Black Friday deal. That's 67% off using code GRIND67. So head over to coveaudio.com slash grind67 and use that code and you will get 67% off the super cool speaker. I think you guys are gonna like it. But for now, let's get back to building. All right, so now we're back to the build. We're gonna open up all the parts that are gonna come in the kit and there'll be links to everything in the description. So let's uh, check it out. So it turns out the cop car body was rather simple. It's uh, definitely a lot easier than some of the other ones. So I put the motor on the front axle there and then I just use that to start off getting a good height for the where I'm gonna want this and then to position how far forward I needed it. Once I did that, then it allowed me to see really how much of this I need to cut out. So now I'm gonna try to leave these floor pans in for rigidity and start by removing basically just this bit here. And that will give me room for my feet and for staring and all that to go through. So what I'm cutting this with is just a Dremel and a little cutting bit, but some of it I'll do with like just a razor knife. You could do it all just scoring it a couple times and then once you get a mark, you can normally break it off or even just a handsaw. So, but this is the fastest and these are still pretty cheap and handy. So the next thing we did is we mounted the hubs onto the uh, axle and we were trying to one, make it look good aesthetically with the body so they weren't too far out or too narrow, but we also were trying to save a chunk of this shaft to make the jack shaft out of. 
and it looks like it's gonna work. So once I got that set up there, I'm just gonna mark this. I'm gonna cut that section off and then I'm gonna cut the threads off because that's not for us. <laughs> out the back here it let me kind of choose a height for the axle and then I just put these in just to space the body out um, an inch and a half in case we ever want to swap the tires out and then I did it up front too and I threw these bearings on the back and this is what's going to be mounted to the frame just to keep that axle nice and stable and then when the spindles up front at the inch and a half body gap they don't um, well this goes that way for the tie rod the bar wouldn't be a straight shot from the back bearing all the way to the front. So what I did is I cut a section and I'm going to tack it onto that bearing. So the tubing we're using is uh, one inch in diameter and 083 on the thickness of it. And we're not going to use the tubing bender at all. So that's kind of why I decided to tack it onto the back and then either go with a little bit of a slant there or with a straight and then reinforce it with a crossbar because cutting a 45 to tie in is pretty easy and then it just reduces having to bend it. first bar <laughs> so I got actually I think I'm gonna have to put the body back on to really see what I'm gonna want to do here but it actually will probably be able to be level my eyes probably lied to me and I thought it'd have to be a little bit down first uh, bar tapped on to the uh, back there and now I can kind of come up here and see where I'm going to need to pivot in. It's got to have some room for steering angle so I'll probably cut this off here and then start uh, bringing the frame into the front engine mount and then re-support the spindles after that. So I laid out all the tires and put the body there, got them roughly where I wanted. Then I cut this first bar and uh, now I'm just squaring up a frame to work with. So this won't actually be square up front, but it will help me with mounting suspension, engine mounts, all the crossbars. The back will probably stay something like this, this basic squared corner. And then we'll have some elevated trellis or trellis to put the seat on. Um, but yeah, this will just be really easy to work from. So I'll probably put a crossbar here that will be the actual spindle mount, but I'll put that in and basically build absolutely everything before I cut these bars off. Um, yeah, so it'll just be a really good point to work from with a perfect square.
already got the engine inside, uh, the first side of the engine mounts done. We have a square frame to work with, which is important. And uh, we got the axle in, got the brake rotor on there, made sure we'll have room for the caliper. And then we just had an extra chain sprocket we threw in there to make sure that will clear. So uh, next episode, we'll probably work on the front uh, spindle connection point and the other engine mounts. And uh, after that, then we'll get into the chain. So there actually, it doesn't look like it right now, but there's a lot of room once you get in. We'll probably have to cut a little bit of dash out, but um, it's gonna be pretty open in the nose. This big boxy front means plenty of room for your feet, and that's awesome. And so we'll probably extend the shift uh, mechanism so that your legs will actually be pretty straight. So yeah, so the chair's gonna go back further too. That will give us a little bit more room. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty comfortable, which is, you know, always ideal when you have no suspension. <laughs> you want maximum room inside. And the door's still open, so that's cool. So we talked about the whole working from a square frame, how helpful that is. The next thing is level. So if you have a level shop, good old fashioned level's gonna work. We don't have that. <laughs> that's not a luxury here at Grind Hard. So these are like pretty cheap on Amazon or whatever, and you just, I'm gonna start it back here on the axle, zero that out, and then we're just gonna work off level, uh, using that as a level line, and then I put it up here on the engine, on a somewhat level part, and that's actually pretty crazy. <laughs> so I already had tacked these in, but I used this, uh, me and Ed, and then we just kinda twisted this when I did these tacks on this engine mount down here, and then we'll do the same thing on the front when we do those engine mounts just to make sure that's relatively level to the axle. So we'll probably use on some other pieces too. Basically anything we need, we'll just go off of this as a baseline. Why that's important too is um, if your engine's off, then the chain alignment's gonna be off too. So it's gonna make that chain last longer and just everything go together smooth. So these center rails here, uh, one, they're just gonna add rigidity. We needed something to mount the seat to, to mount the engine to, um, all, all that good stuff. Bjorn going crazy in the background. And then they're also gonna help me tie in the uh, crossbars before I cut this outside square part off. So they're squared right now, that's a big help. And then we used the notcher just cause we had it for these, for all these fittings. But in this next video, we'll show how you can notch those uh, just with a grinder. So for the engine mounts here, I just made them out of a flat piece of uh, steel. And I, I did a little cardboard aided design. So I just put a piece of cardboard here, uh, made sure it was gonna clear mainly on this side. Um, once I got that size, I copied it onto the steel. I cut that out, notched the bottom. And then when I put it up there, I, I kind of uh, punched a hole in the center to where I thought it needed to be for the bolt. Then I put it up there and I shined a light through just to make sure that was pretty centered. Drilled that first hole and then copied it onto the second one for the alignment of the second hole. And then I left like a little bit of play in this just for the side to side rock. So I ended up tacking this one on and then like we talked about, put that up here, tilted it and then tacked that one on after. Mm -hmm. 